Hello everyone. Uh, happy Friday, January 22nd, 2021. Here we are in natural pigments. My name is Tatiana Zaitseva. I will be assisted by always by Joshua Hanlon. Today we will talk about historical yellows. And if you are here, obviously you know something about natural pigments and especially about um, Rubli of line uh, oil colors. I will tell you today um, the major three different uh, uh, points. What three different points? What how we are different from uh, everybody else from all other companies. And one of the suspects will be uh, the historical pigments. So another one is no additives and um, different particle size, which we will definitely co cover on um, other programs. How today will, um, uh, will day go? So first we will show you um, um, probably like 30 minutes uh, video, which we will talk about uh, all different uh, yellow colors. And uh, after that, if you have any um, questions, I, I mean, you can, post your questions during the, uh, while we are talking, George will read them and immediately uh, answer if we, if we need. Uh, if not, so then uh, after this uh, 30 minutes uh, video, we can definitely uh, show you all colors. I can squeeze it, paint, uh, paint with some of them. And um, so the Rublev colors, we started 17 years ago and the uh, first question was what what uh, pigments will we take and uh, the there basically there were not much struggle about we decided to take historical pigments invented before 1850 then quickly we understood then there are some pigments what not exist anymore uh, on your palette and so then nowadays we are saying uh, 1850 or pigments what disappearing from your palette so uh, some of them don't need to be on your palette. Some of them definitely have uh, interest. And so let's talk about yellows. So let's, uh, so what you will see right now, so on left side, uh, I will have Latin yellow light and on right side, we will have cadmium yellow light and we will compare um, on both sides. And so you will see how they different. With white, I will try to mix equal amount um, uh, of white with uh, with color. Although on all, all others, um, it will be different amounts, obviously, because otherwise uh, it will the all colors. What you you saw, it will be cadmium red light, orange molybdate, uh, violet. Him, uh, I mean, uh, it would be ultramarine violet and uh, ultramarine blue. They will be uh, overpowering, so it will be very small amounts. I will add to the color. This lead tin yellow um, is a pigment that was used in the late medieval period, and um, came through until uh, about the middle of the uh, 17th century. 
and then it disappeared and we didn't even know it existed until the 1941 it was discovered at the Dorner Institute uh, on some 17th century paintings And we have this lead tin yellow in three different shades. And this is the light shade. What I understand, it's uh, two types of lead tins. And George, if you can explain what's the difference. Yes, uh, the two, there's a type one and a type two. And um, the type one is, uh, is, is the lead, lead tin oxide. And the type two is a lead tin silicate. So a slight difference in the, uh, in the pigment uh, chemistry. The, um, uh, someone asked if, if uh, Vermeer used it. Yes, definitely. Uh, all 17th century artists were using this, this color. It was very popular. Uh, at that time. And someone else asks, uh, lead tin, what was, he, what was lead tin yellow used for? Well, it was, uh, it was used in glass, uh, but artists found, and a lot of, by the way, a lot of pigments were used for other purposes. Specifically, a lot of them found per, uh, function in glass. And so um, uh, this uh, artist then started using it in their paint. What's interesting about this color is the lead tin yellow light is that it has, it's a very, very pale hue, um, somewhat transparent, and you can see it just modulates, you know, its uh, colors when it's in mixtures, which is uh, incredible when you think about how it, see the difference between the cadmium yellow. Some of our customers use lead tin yellow light as a white, actually. So then, and you can see why it is. It's pretty pale and uh, slightly um, yellowish. And so then, yes, it's not as, a, as a strong as white color, especially for portraiture, it would be great to use. Amy asks, uh, I'm curious how it would compare to mixing with Naples yellow. We don't mix it here with Naples, but we could do that uh, a little bit later. We will show all of you, uh, all, all, all colors here. We will uh, show chromes and Naples yellows here. But um, is, um, is that what the question? So if you mix Latin with Naples yellow, is that that was the question? Yeah, that's okay. what that's what it okay. sounded like there. Okay. Um, Amaresh asks, is the lead tin silicate what the artist Giotto used to paint and get gold shapes in? Um, Giotto uh, used actual gold uh, leaf in uh, in his frescoes, um, and it's it's possible that he also used uh, lead tin yellow because it was used uh, in uh, throughout uh, the medieval period. So it's an interesting color as a result. Patrick remarks that the third mix is a nice flesh tone. Yes, it. Absolutely. That's where it really yes. shines. This particular yes. color. Hillary asks uh, uh, if it could be used to moderate other colors, and yeah, very definitely. That's what it's really good. It's kind of a a uh, warm white. Yes. And that's how a lot of artists so far have been using it. And you see that um, uh, when it's mixed with that ultramarine violet or any kind of violet, see that, that uh, grayish color. It's, it's wonderful and it can be modulated so that it goes a little bit cool to a little bit warm. And 
getting some other interesting facts about um, lead tin. It was called Massacot in uh, old manuscripts. Also Giallolino, uh, which is the Italian word. And, um, and it had some other common names. Here's on our cards what we show you before. Now uh, it's exactly the same uh, cards, uh, white and, uh, and black. You can see how that uh, color uh, looks on both. And so that's the mixtures what we already mix and now. So yes, you can see the difference between two of them. This is just Latin yellow. First was Latin yellow light. This is uh, Latin yellow. And it's uh, uh, quite stronger than the first one, you can see, but still not as uh, as a chromes, uh, cadmium, I'm sorry. You see the tinting abilities on, on the right side. Hiller asks if this video will be recorded. Yes, it will be. Lovey asks, I'd like to see it compared to unbleached titanium. Unfortunately, we don't have a buff titanium here today with us. Otherwise, we would try that. In fact, we don't have we don't have ultramarine violet as a oil color. I made specifically just for that uh, video. Uh, I uh, hand grind, and so uh, it's why it's behaved quite different than all other colors just to show um, for you how, you know, how it's, um, all of this yellows behave as violet. Um, now, of course, George, so uh, seeing that video, he wants to produce this color. And so I, I just probably made mistake doing this color. <laughs> she doesn't like it when I see new colors and get excited and want yes, to make them like again. Yes, it's like always. Something. It's ultramarine violet is a very, uh, a very transparent and, and somewhat weak tinting violet, but uh, it's, you know, we, we really love weak tinting colors because they're so easy to work with. Um, you don't overshoot a color uh, when you start mixing it. And uh, Tanya does a really great job here of getting some tints, um, you know, uh, on the fly like this. She's doing it very fast though. It's I amazing. Know. Wow, look at that knife. Um, <laughs> Also, lead tin yellow, by the way, was actually, they've actually found lead tin oxides uh, in glass and ceramic glazes, which is where it really was used primarily as uh, uh, much earlier than, than the 1300s. Uh, they find it in uh, Roman glass, but it wasn't used in painting, and we're, we're focusing on how it was used in painting primarily here. Here's again, all this mixture is what you saw. Uh, on the cards. Lovey asks, how much money do you have to pay to work there? <laughs> uh, that's, that's great. Me or you? <laughs> <laughs> we don't make anything. <laughs> uh, that's the fun, so. We're just, we have too much fun doing and this. And here's Latin yellow dark, and you can see. And so uh, <laughs> later, after when uh, we didn't compare here between three uh, Latins, uh, the cards, but I will show you later how they are different. And so you will see definitely on um, all together three. Nancy asks, how does number one and two differ from mixing and modeling? Or if you're referring to lead white. Uh, light and the, uh, I mean the lead tin uh, light and the lead tin yellow. Um, well, they're just a little bit darker. And, you know, one's a little bit more darker. The lead tin yellow, of course, is a little bit more yellowish. I can tell you this, like uh, if if uh, Nancy asked about behavior, so then uh, probably the lead tin yellow light, the fluffiest one. Um, and when uh, next one we will show Naples yellow for you and so I will tell you this so it's uh, so like toughy like and uh, it's 
little bit like almost uncomfortable to work but again um, it's one thing what I am just mixing the colors and another one when, when it's on your palette and uh, Naples yellow are beautiful colors and uh, if we will talk about all our five uh, historical yellows of course uh, probably Latin yellow uh, would be the easiest one to, to work because you, you can't overshoot you can overpower it's just uh, quite I, I, I found that easiest one to work with someone asks what about strontium yellow um, that's, that's we don't do a strontium yellow but we're looking at it don't ask that <laughs> <laughs> because George already talked about this. 19 that's a 19th century color we're looking at a couple of those that are, are quite interesting Amy asks are you a new company uh, like Tanya mentioned we actually founded Natural Pigments in 2003. We didn't start making oils until about um, 2006 or seven. 2006, we made the uh, first our batches, uh, brought to, to National Gallery <laughs> George's friends. And uh, that was our first attempt. Uh, it, what is it's uh, 16 years ago yeah. 15 16 yeah. years ago and like i said <coughs> in the beginning when we uh when we made our first batches the the first equation come up what colors do we choose and we intentionally didn't want to to have exactly the same colors like everybody else using because everybody else doing such a great job why to bother so um our colors uh, if you will look our catalog on uh, 2007, um, it was only 22 colors, but they they did include most interesting colors. Nobody in the world uh, make uh, make them. It among them it was um, uh, we are now uh, entering Naples yellow. So I'm. Uh, so back to. We're uh, showing the three uh, Naples yellows Naples, that we yeah. have. Yes. And these are some of the names: Jalalino, Zalalino, uh, Niep Gelb, and which is lead antinomy. And one thing, um, just wanted to make sure and say here is, um, lead antinomy. Uh, Naples yellow, the name has only been used to designate lead antinomy for the last 300 years. But the problem is L Naples yellow is often confused and only means a mixed color. And in fact, all of your tubes of paint when it says Naples yellow uh, is not actually lead antinomy. So it's a, it's a, big, it's a big issue with us because it's, um, uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of confusion. So we always put a lead antinomy along with the name too alleviate some of the confusion so back to uh to what i said about first 22 colors among them we had actually smolt we did uh, have cinnabar we did have malachite we still try to to come back to these colors and we uh, definitely will uh, make a big announcement uh, about when we have uh, all of them but at this point, uh, I mean, uh, all colors what we have right now are historical, uh, what we show in today. They count as a historical because uh, not many uh, companies are make them anymore. Someone asks, uh, uh, other than its subtlety, does lead tin yellow have long lasting advantages? It does. Absolutely. Uh, over things like, um, uh, let's say other types of colors um, and the good thing is is that it, it's it's much faster drying um, and so uh, in in mixtures with other colors so so if you mix it with a cadmium uh, it'll get the cadmium to dry faster because cadmiums dry extremely slow uh, El Elvin asks uh, was there a specific reason for using lead white here it's because because uh, in, with our company, we specialize in uh, lead colors. Few other companies do that. And because we believe that there's a lot of benefit, we know there's a lot of benefit in using lead white, 
because it does um, it does make the strongest paint films, the more flexible paint films. Titanium actually ends up being somewhat brittle as a result. And so, how we mentioned before, some of the colors um, are in the history, they are just pushing each other. So, if we uh, today we will show you another uh, uh, great color, it's orpiment. So that. Um, was used through the history but again uh, was lost at some point so like then it was pushed by um, Latin yellow was pushed by Naples yellow because Naples uh, yellow was much easier to produce and so then Latin yellow disappeared like George said so for several centuries then Naples yellow was uh, pushed by chromes uh, chromes were pushed by cadmiums, cadmiums now pushed by uh, organic pigments and nowadays we live in a crazy world where cadmiums, uh, uh, you know, some cadmiums, cadmium free colors, which is, uh, sounds crazy, but that's where we are going. And like I said, and some colors would make sense if uh, probably 22nd century uh, artists will no, never know what zinc uh, why it is hopefully that's the case or maybe even better so so our scientists will figure out how to make zinc white as uh, less uh, uh, less brittle than it is right now same like happened with cadmium uh, uh, chromes i'm sorry so then because with um, uh, if we will take early history of chromes they were not as stable as these days. And uh, when we will be in chromes, George will definitely talk about that, how we prevent these days chromes um, discolored, discoloring. Michael asks, uh, is lead tin yellow light made with the same pigment as regular lead tin yellow with the addition of a white pigment? And the answer is, it's just a different shade of the pigment. Uh, pigments can be modified, uh, just like you have different shades of cadmiums. It's, it's still one pigment, but it's modified by the process, whether it's in a furnace and they heat it, or different uh, proportions, of, in the case of lead tin yellow, uh, lead oxide and tin oxide. There's Yoke. Oh, hi, Yoke. She asks about the permanence of the color. It's, it has a very good reputation. Lead tin yellow is a very stable color. Same with Naples yellow, too. Now we're getting into the chromes. And the chromes, the chrome yellows started at, a, at the beginning of the um, 19th century. Uh, initially, they had a very bad reputation because they darkened or they, they tended to, uh, they usually tended to darken. Um, this, uh, this, was, uh, uh, this was fixed, let's say, in the uh, end of the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, when they began to coat the pigment with a silicate. And so now it's actually um, uh, a fairly permanent pigment. See, that's what I was talking about. Some uh, some colors are uh, behaving some kind of, uh, you know, badly. And so then suddenly uh, artists decide to not use. So then that's the stigma was uh, 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 against the chromes. So it's why chromes were uh, very beautiful colors on the beginning of 20th century and um, uh, end of the 19th and beginning of 20th century uh, when gold painted with that. And so now that's why this uh, sunflowers are, uh, his sunflowers are not the same colors. But um, just because of science, so we know how to fix it. And so uh, these days we are only company in the world who make the uh, Chrome yellows. Chrome yeah. yellows. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Still going back, getting questions about lead tin. Why yes. did all of the a lot of these colors disappear? By the way, because yes. uh, uh, remember that they were originally used in other things than artist paints, and so when uh, when they found other pigments that perhaps were more less expensive. 
they uh, dropped making those pigments. And so that's why they tend to disappear. This is, this is still happening. Uh, you have a pigment called manganese blue, which, uh, which the company in Germany stopped making uh, right at the end of 1990s. And so it disappears, not because it was a bad pigment. It just, um, it, it, was a, it wasn't a very strong tinting pigment. And so they didn't, and it was a little more expensive than other blues that could be duplicated in the hue. But see, for artists, it's not simply about hue. It has to be about longevity. And these historical pigments uh, are light, fast, and stable for the most part. And, um, uh... and it's like, you see that, uh, that beautiful color right in the middle, uh, middle what? orange molybdate. So it was uh, 20th century color. It was um, uh, discovered in 1920s, but by 1970s, it was dropped by all, uh, all uh, companies because it contains lead. So we decided to, to bring to you back because it's such a beautiful color, very stable these days. And so, and uh, it's, it's not uh, uh, as uh, red as cadmiums, but as power, uh, powerful as the cadmiums too. So, yeah, beautiful color. One of our best sellers. And I just put up a uh, uh, Clara uh, uh, asks, will lead tin react chemically with a copper plate? In um, in the sense that all uh, all oil colors react somewhat to a copper plate. Uh, in that the copper acts as a dryer, but other than that, uh, as far as we know, we haven't tested it on copper plate, um, but it, uh, it was historically used on copper plates. And so, yes, I think it's, uh, it's, it is uh, long lasting in that regards. And long lasting meaning light fast, but there's other issues besides light fastness uh, that can be a problem. Um, but uh, these colors, they're, they're stable colors. Stephanie asks about lead white paint. And... Um, oh, we love to talk about lead white. So what's um, about this, we, due to we toxicity? Don't have to, we, we may be able to talk about safety and tips a little bit later. Yes. Um, but... Um, uh, but it is possible to use these pigments in a safe way. And you can see I'm in gloves. That is the major, what you can do to prevent toxicity on your different hands. The difference between lead tin yellow and Naples yellow? Um, uh, in my opinion, like I said, uh, lead tin yellow, uh, much easier to, uh, to work with, uh, just to, uh, due to the, how color behaves because, uh, Naples yellow, a little bit more tacky, um, toughy, like, uh, and on top of that, they are not as, um, as, uh, powerful, not, uh, the tinting strength. That's what I'm saying. So, but again, uh, you guys all different. And uh, so some of you absolutely love uh, uh, powerful colors. And so then if we talk uh, like cadmiums, so then of course it's, um, you know, in my opinion, uh, Latin's much easier to work with. I do need to mention the, the prices, of course, and uh, um, because the uh, Latin's are uh, more uh, more expensive naples yellow even more expensive it's due to the pigments and so um of course cadmiums in this case uh would be less oh now we get into the fun color just uh elizabeth hi elizabeth, hi, elizabeth. Um, just wanted to say silicate is because silicate is um the reason is because uh, silicate is inert so that it protects the color this is also this is the case, by the way, for titaniums. Tit all the titaniums today are coated in a silicate or perhaps a zirconium. Uh, that's very common. So this is one of the most interesting colors um, among this. This is orpiment. Orpiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, 
nobody nobody in the world is attempting to do that we are um, here crazy enough to do this because george absolutely loves all the historical colors and so or pigment it's arsenic sulfate so it's um, it's quite um, toxic please be careful don't eat <laughs> so but other it than is that, arsenic sulfide yes and um it was uh, it is. It was found as a paint pigment in uh, the earliest dynasties of Egypt. Yes, very old. And um, historically, uh, it's made with glass powder. That's what we are doing. Or it was exactly. ground, ground, ground with glass powder, with gr yeah. Yeah. which is what we did in this particular uh, sample here. So, which makes uh, when I was working with that uh, uh, color, makes it um, quite unusual property it's almost like sand like um it's um it's difficult to work uh, work and dif difficult to spread i i, I it's should a, say it's that. a large particle size yes, pigment. it is huge and so and again who knows about us we talk about particle size uh, quite often and so ore pigment will be probably our uh, biggest particles you can see the texture here in these yes. samples here very they're yes. very visible we may produce a small, uh, smaller particle version of orpiment too. But for now, we have this one. This one, yeah. And um, and you see the difference. Yeah. And and, uh, and by the way, while I'm painting here with uh, with orpiment, it smells as rotten eggs. It's a sulfide. It's, it's a, yeah. arsenic sulfide. Um, so it's it's a specialty thing. We don't encourage everybody to go out and get. No, please, yes, and know, it's it will be that. quite expensive. So uh, it's it's not for everybody, and I uh, we don't encourage you to to work with that unless you you definitely need that you know specifically historical aspect of that uh, color. So I'm going to try to go back and put on a few of the questions okay. um, that uh, we saw. Um, let me see here. And let me see here. Trying to keep going here. Sorry about this. It's okay. So uh, while George is looking mm -hmm. for uh, um, uh, for the question, so I can tell you this. If George, if you will put that camera, is that possible to, to yep. show them? Uh, yeah. Why don't you so go and show I them? wanted to show you this. Um, three latins and you can see latin yellow light the our regular latin yellow and latin yellow dark and you can see the difference in uh, between three of them look at that none of the other colors could uh, uh, could pr uh, produce that so this is uh, quite unusual and of course that's that story of our uh, company every time when we talk about uh, some colors and so we sold out and so then the moment we advertise um then uh, then we will talk today about historical uh latins and um, uh, historical yellows we sold out this uh, two color so actually these two colors right now we are out of stock don't worry uh probably uh by the end of the February, we will be back in stock. We definitely will have this. These colors we, we will have. It's not like in story with Vermilion, because for now we really uh, sitting on bench. And so we don't even know will we have a color at all or not pigment at all. But Latin's not a problem. It's just, um, it just we didn't expect to sell that many. Uh, so this Latin's. Uh, and I can tell you this, I painted all of them at the same time and it was, uh, 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 what it uh, was, probably five days ago. It, that was dried uh, over three days, was completely dried. So uh, here I will show you Naples <coughs> yellow. And you will see how they are different. So uh, all of them together, and so they dried too, and they dried as uh, as fast as uh, as um, uh, latins. And um, here I will show chromes, and that's what interesting. I I want you to see that. Uh, um, I s you see this? 
So chromes dried uh, quite fast, but on very top uh, layers. So if you will uh, paint with chromes, you need to remember they will dry very fast uh, uh, top layer, uh, but if you paint very thickly, so then be careful, it's still kind of soft inside there. I just wanted to really to show you colors. That's why I, I, uh, I made that very thick uh, layers. So this is our chromes compared to Latins. And I will hopefully not make a big mess of that because cadmiums are not even close to dry today i touched and uh, you can see then it's still it's still not dried even so then cadmiums are very slow drying yeah you know, very slow you know. and uh, yep that's so this is the difference uh, I wanted to show all of uh, all of them together compared to Latins. And here is, of course, Orpiment. Interesting about Orpiment. Um, Henry asks here, I wonder if it ever was used in his cosmetic. Yes, exactly. I... It was used in cosmetics in Egypt. Yes. <laughs> this is... It's, it is... Uh, they, they found samples of... Uh, uh, the uh, orpiment yellow arsenic sulfide, along with its cousin Realgar, uh, in cosmetic uh, cases. So that's kind of interesting. And um, uh, and then Elizabeth says, of course, that there's many forms of orpiment. Orpiment uh, has a reputation of of reacting with some uh, other pigments. So. Um, but it certainly will help your painting from being e eaten by insects because that's exactly how it was used in some cases. Smells horrible even after drying and uh, so it's really, really smelly color. But it's, it's very interesting. Um, it, it is. It's a fascinating. Uh, we were also asked if... Uh, and you can see that, look at the under... Look, I, I wanted to show you if it's visible, the undertone. And so you can see how yellowish here. Yeah, it goes from this kind of ochreish yellow. Yeah. And if you spread it thinly, it'll go yeah. to a bright yellow. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. versatile about yes. that. Amazing. Um, and, and then, of course, we do have the pigment. And we will uh, next, I hope next month, uh, <laughs> introduce a set of very rare colors, um, such as cinnabar in syringes oh. so I, I i i might have said something that i shouldn't have <laughs> jesus <laughs> but it's going to be exciting um so we're um uh we're really excited just, about uh, introducing uh, it's that. supposed to be on december but some colors are misbehaving and we will have um, uh, quite interesting colors so it will be quite expensive but yes it will be um uh, it will be available for you so uh, among the that well, we uh, we were talking about uh, the small colors and so and uh, cinnabar. So cinnabar we were able to bring back to to our line, and that's due to uh, because we lost uh, our vermilion, and uh, vermilion is synthetic um, uh, synthetic version of the cinnabar. It's mercury sulfate, and so that's um, that's why we brought until we will find the vermilion. And um, on all our classes, we talk about, of course, the uh, interesting blue color. It's called uh, smalt. And um, again, we sell the pigments on um, uh, uh, two different particle uh, sides, uh, side sizes. And um, uh, if whoever is interested, please call us. We will be. I would be happy to explain how and what, uh, how to to use it. But it was historically used by uh, almost all our uh, old masters. Um, the problem is uh, we can't uh, make the color and put in tube uh, because it it, it can uh, stay a long time uh, in um, in the oil suspended in oil, so it will leave in. So that's why we we don't do that. We did have that attempt. Um, 12 years ago, it was most interesting color. Uh, people, whoever bought and used immediately, of course, were so excited and still call us and begging us to repeat that color. 
and um, so but unfortunately we can't put in tubes so buy the pigment and uh, mix in your palette and use it immediately Nancy asks uh, what pigments does orpiment react um, in literature it's said to react with lead white and with copper based pigments um, and we're going to be testing that to be sure because not everything in literature is correct um, in the old literature, but uh, we're going to be testing that to s determine whether it can be used with the lead white or not. Um, Did somebody Kali ask? asks, is chrome yellow light yes. or medium more like the historical shade? It's, it's approximate. We, there's, it's uh, because these colors, when you produce them, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're more or less uh, close to these historical colors. Uh, because of the constituency, but they may not be dead on because that will tend to vary from pigment to pigment. Um, T-Boat asks, have been using uh, our lead tin yellows and uh, she likes the lead tin yellow dark mixed with local earth colors from Wyoming. Great, yeah, it, they, they work perfect with other earth colors. Elizabeth asks, does the dried paint film ever stop smelling like sulfur? Yes, absolutely. For yeah. now, it's not, but it's, probably it's, at some point it will. It will. It's, it doesn't fill the room. It just, you know, it's just, uh, uh, it, it's just uh, a little bit of smell during. Tanya's more sensitive to it than I am. <laughs> it does smell like rotten eggs, so you can't... Uh, so um, here's somebody I think uh, was uh, asking Naples yellow okay. compared to with tin yellow. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm just putting here, and so I I don't know you want it mixed with uh, other colors or what's or just to show you how it's behave. By the way, here's a question always uh, uh, we were asked, and so yes, it is uh, it, the separation can happen because it's very heavy pigment and uh, as a company we decided from the beginning do not put any additives so um and it's lead pigments you remember lead intimidates and lead uh, tin so then it's uh, literally uh, how uh, it's like half a pound uh, um, every each of them and so it will happen and so if it happens so you can just put on you know on the uh, paper and uh, uh, whatever exceeds soak up soak, soak up, up the excess the, well, oil yes yeah. or you can put it back in as too. much as it sounds crazy you can shake up and i can hear i don't know if you will hear i, I, I just will do this near the microphone but yes that so then in this case you need to keep your tubes upside down so when you uh when you keep them upside down so the oil goes up <clears throat> it's just simple physics and so then uh, when you squeeze, then the oil will not gush. But even if it happened, it's not a big deal. So uh, again, um, so the ex excess of oil, so then will just leak to the, uh, to the paper. So there's, a, there's a, qu a question yeah. uh, in regards to going back to smalt. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Is it a color or a dryer? It's actually color, but it happened to be a dryer because uh, George will tell us the, it's <clears throat> it's a cobalt glass. So it acts yes. as a dryer. It was used as a dryer as well as a color. Um, and um, and Sherry asks if was it vermilion that has to be used right away? And no, no, it's, um, absolutely no, it's, not. We it's, have it's, it's smalt. It's smalt. Yeah, uh, vermilion. Um, you know, we were selling this. Uh, on Portrait Society uh, <clears throat> when artists would come every year and they would because we usually don't have any um, uh, discounts and so and uh, that would be opportunity for uh, for artists to buy on our special occasions and so then uh, vermilion just because it's such a powerful color and um, so it, it's um, the tinting strength, the strength is so great. So you use smallest amount. And so then some people come to me and they would say like they have a six years tubes. And so it will be just still like this. And um, so, no, you can uh, and there are 
almost never I heard a separation on vermilion, although vermilion is the heaviest pigment on the planet Earth now, what we know, maybe very soon we will find out something else, but for now, yes. So vermilion, great color, unfortunately, we lost for now. Uh, Sophie asks, do plain pigments left in powder form have a shelf life? Uh, no, no, they, um, they, they're in, they can be stored. They're finding pigments in ancient Egypt that are still usable. So, um, so yeah, they can be used uh, any amount of time. Do I mix with colors or Go ahead. we just, uh, yeah. what, what do you want me to mix with? Um, so well, with somebody that? wanted to see Naples yellow and lead tin yellow. So this is all together? I, uh, that's what I thought, yeah. That's what it sounded like. Okay. I don't see the purpose, but anyway. Oh yes, that's um, okay. Again, I would think then probably with white would be more, but I already did that on video. So if we have any other requests, we'll take some requests. Um, Tanya, this is a question from someone regarding yes. Naples yellow. Yes. It looked tacky compared to the lead tin, so it was just confirming. Yes, Naples yellow, you, uh, it's definitely tacky. Uh, tackier. If, yeah, tackier, yeah. yes. <laughs> if, uh, if this one is, you know, it's quite fluffy, uh, all, all uh, lead tins, but uh, Naples are definitely stickier. And um, um, again, it's... Um, what we always tell artists, so then uh, Naples yellow is probably one of the true uh, yellows. If if you look cadmiums, uh, and usually when you mix them with um, um, with other colors, so, so then or especially like whites, so they go or towards uh, green or towards uh, orangey. So, but lead tints are staying true to the yellow and you can you could see that on swatches too so yeah that's one of the un, like beautiful colors i think now I, it was a lot of discoveries for us uh, too so george and i uh we make these colors uh, last uh, 15 years but we never put them together and just because we promise you to to do this uh, session today so we were working last week on, on this uh, colors together. That was incredible discovery for us. So, yeah. And somebody, somebody asked here. Yes. That's a very pale lead tin yellow. Yes. Um, um, I think that's herb, but um, it's uh, the lead tin yellow. That's the lead tin yellow light. Yes. which is different from the lead tin yellow. Yes, I can uh, put for you right now lead tin yellow. So you might have a different version of that. Yeah, so uh, right here, you can see here how different that's the uh, lead tin yellow, like here. Oh, that's, you can see, okay, here. And um, like that. Do, we don't have any greens here, do we? I have, uh, unfortunately, I have only viridium. So, um, yes, she wants, Christina would like to see a lead tin yellow light. With, yes. Uh, let's, let's, let's see it with the, uh, viridian with it's the, with the viridian. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite, um, quite powerful. So I, I'm not sure. Sure. What should I? I'm not an artist, Christina. I remember. I <laughs> just uh, let's see how I will. I will try to. No, just uh, just add it in there. And if we we show what Viridian actually looks like, so it's. Quite, like I said, it's quite powerful. And um, yeah. so it, it, you can use it uh, as to, you can use the lead tin yellow light to substitute for any white. Uh, 
Yes. To to kind of but and keep it uh, keep it warm. Uh, so that's a really good function for that. Um, Deb asks. Yes. Can you talk about why you use no additives in two paints? Okay, now you can switch to me, and so then because it look like I'm, I'm much better when I'm on recordings mixing. <laughs> so um, yes, so uh, we will have whole section or video like this made why exactly we uh, we don't put uh, any additives. But short story is so then. Um, our company started in garage and we definitely didn't think of as a company it was George's hobby and uh, so he he was mixing his own uh, colors because he was working on egg tempera mostly at that time but uh, one day he decided to go back to his love which was uh, oil colors and he mixed uh, all colors um, uh, for himself he was amazed how they behave different than um, then tubed color of what was uh, given to artists in, um, in, what is it, like 20th century? Now it's 21st. <laughs> so um, that's how it started. And so then um, uh, the moment we, being the modern people, of course, we understood that in order to put that color in the, the tube, all companies in the world are uh, putting additives and um, in order to stabilize the, the pigment in the oil, because what additives do, they, um, they gel, gel like uh, oil. And, um, and um, so it's uh, strictly for production. It was nothing uh, to do uh, with artist side and how you see uh, the color. So, but the moment we put uh, additive to the first hour uh, color, the behavior was gone. And uh, it's become this, um, you know, toothpaste looking like buttery, like what uh, all other companies are proud to say about, like, here's buttery color. So it's good on some cases, absolutely. Uh, but um, we didn't see uh, this as advantage. So we decided to not uh, put any additives. That means we make in our colors uh, quite different. We, we produce them different and about that we will talk next uh, next time so that's the short story about and so then that's why uh, all our colors are behave different uh, all of them uh, will be um, some of them definitely have uh, separation we don't afraid that we uh, explain artists because uh, in mo most cases artists are afraid of that and they think something wrong with color and um, uh, we explained that it's not and um, um, and you know you can mitigate that like I said so if it's too much oil so then uh, again it means in production uh, we needed that oil in order to to put through the machines um, but other than that uh, just squeezing oil from the oil uh, from uh, from tube nothing bad with that so um if it needs to be sometimes happened uh and i i want to mention that sometimes happen if you you deplete so much oil and at some point in the tube when you come to the end of the tube it's uh, kind of stiff not in all colors like i want to tell you this it's not uh, all colors behave like this but uh so that means you took all uh, oil what it needs to be for that pigment so um it's nothing wrong with that color because um, uh, as long as it's not uh, doesn't have uh, uh, oxid uh, uh, oxidation process going, so that means the the um, air is not going through the tube. It's still good. So what you will do, you can just open the tube from another side, take out everything from the tube and um, mix with any oil you have in your studio and it will be uh, good to go but we will talk about all of that uh, tricks and um, um, aspects of that um, uh, colors later but the major advantage of that uh, what we try to do here in uh, in our company so the color will behave as close as possible if you will grind that color by yourself an advantage of that is 
using less mediums. And we will talk about this again next time. But now I need to mention the next week on Friday, and I believe it's Friday 29th uh, of mm -hmm. uh, January. So same time here, uh, we will meet you and we will show you how to make the oil paint. Doesn't mean then you <clears throat> all suddenly will start making your colors, but at least to see once when, how uh, oil was uh, paint, a uh, hand grind, so and the behavior. So that would be very interesting program. So then, um, so again, I will. Uh, I want to remind January 29th, um, 10 o'clock Pacific time here. Natural pigments. More questions? Yep. Okay. Uh, do you ever get a gray substance when mixing Naples yellow with a steel palette knife? Good question. Uh, Naples yellow does react to uh, to metal. Um, um, not exactly to it doesn't knife. it doesn't react to the to the metal but what happens is because the antinomy is very hard and yes. abrasive yes. Uh, it actually will grind the metal yes and then you end up with little you know microscopic pieces of metal, metal. which doesn't make it look gray but actually makes green. it look green yes um but uh, but as you can see in in practicality here, when Tanya's mixing, uh, you don't really see it uh, with a palette knife. But on the mill, we did have fun experience. We wanted <laughs> so to see was... if that was correct, and we, we thought it... like if it's not reacting to knife, how about we will put on our mill, and uh, we <laughs> ground probably like. A like first uh, couple pounds and we realized and we put uh, yellow um, uh, pigment uh, to the um, to the mill and it was go out green so yeah. that's so true. we just did that experiment to see what it actually so we we have to grind it on uh, stone mills yes so that's the other nowadays thing. we have a stone mill in yeah. our, our company uh, is it okay to cut chrome yellows with extenders absolutely you can do that with all pa all paints, Absolutely. actually. Absolutely. So that would be a wise uh, way to, to paint with that because they are very powerful. And if you need to tune down, so uh, you definitely can use extenders uh, or what in, uh, in our company we have bright uh, uh, color, which is like uh, very transparent um, um, barium sulfate uh, white color. Um, or we have uh, actually in our company we do have and we already talked about this in pasta medium and Velasquez medium which is essentially chalk and um, uh, different linseed oil so then yes absolutely Alia Hi, Hi. Alia um, are there concerns with any of these yellows being painted on copper itself as a substrate no except for possibly orpiment uh, but we're uh, we're going to be testing that to determine. So, but the lead, the lead tins and the maples and the uh, chrome yellows, no. So nice to see today so many of our friends here. So that's so great. Thank you guys being here. Um, the lead tin yellow is a lighter version of it. Is it? Is this a proprietary color? No, the no, lead tin yellow no. light is simply a light version of lead tin yellow. It is a single pigment. Yes. Not a color mix. Here's another another good aspect uh, on, uh, on our line of the colors. Um, uh, almost all of our colors are single pigment and we will talk about this later too. So we do have uh, historical whites. Um, oh, we have mixture of uh, only two pigments and uh, we have historical five mixtures and again it's historical 19th century uh, and it's uh, only five colors all other colors in our company always single pigment Bridget asks are there any famous paintings you could mention that have orpiment in them um, uh, Tintoretto made uh, fantastic use of orpiment uh, in his work and we showed one, we showed one of his works, it's a portrait um, during uh, the early part of this, uh, this, uh, this session here. 
Um, let me see here. And there were some questions about uh, Naples yellow. Or, I'm sorry, smalt. Yes. And um, I uh, opened jar of worms. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I know. I know. I know. So the um, uh, uh, smalt uh, did uh, alter, and it had to do with uh, with the chemical composition. Um, uh, which means actually that it had a, when the smalt had a small amount of phosphate, it would leach out. Um, the smalt that we have has a very high amount of phosphate, so it shouldn't uh, fade, but we're going to be testing this uh, also to be sure. But in, uh, in our samples that we've done informally, we haven't seen uh, much alteration there. I can show, uh, I have pigment right uh, now, George, you can uh, switch the camera and so I can uh, uh, show f uh, f just, just for fun. Uh, so you can answer questions. So remember that we're going to, um, uh, we're going to be having, uh, this is going to be record, this is recording. And uh, it will be available on um, on our uh, our That's YouTube channel. You need to put it down a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right open, here. open, open yeah, it again. I so know. This, okay. Yeah. So this is small. We have another version called Royal Small too. There's uh, Royal Small, and of course, for our students, I know you. Uh, oh, I switch here. So that's that's the Royal Small. That's the small. You see the difference. So then, but for our students, we will show you next week about this color. I will talk a lot. So this is the. Yes. Um, interesting question, Catherine uh, asks. So Naples yellow grind down paint brushes quickly? No, no. The issue is that it, it it's it's abrasive on metal, and um, and so that's that wasn't an issue for brushes. Probably should just return back to um, the question here. Do you know how artificial substitutes nickel titanium titanate yellow stand up to the r real lead tin yellow? Um, if you mean by how they compare, um, we don't uh, we don't have that color here, so we uh, we couldn't do in any kind of comparison at this point. And. Um, Okay. Any other qu requests there? So I guess we we are done for today. So just keep in mind we'll have this um, uh, this this is is being recorded, so you, you can view this uh, at a later time on on the Natural Pigments uh, Facebook page as well as on our YouTube page. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. So nice to see you all here and uh, see you next time. Bye now.